Hello everyone and welcome to the LARP Tales podcast. My name is Robin and today Oliver and I are joined by Claire Evans. Claire Evans is a player experience and community manager at Profound Decisions. Profound Decisions being the company that runs Empire LARP which is the largest LARP here in the UK. We discuss Claire's role at Profound Decisions, Claire's own LARP experiences and origins, and how Empire LARP facilitates new players. If you're watching us on YouTube, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment below. If you're listening to us on your favorite audio platforms such as Apple Podcasts or Spotify, then consider leaving us a five-star review That way it helps other people find us on those platforms. We also have a Patreon if you do wish to support us in that way. Our Patreon is currently at three bucks a month and we tend to produce on average three videos a month. So you're getting a video for a buck, which isn't too bad. You are of course under no obligation to do so. Our content is also completely free everywhere. And with that all out of the way, let's get into our conversation with Claire. everyone we are joined uh, by Claire Evans uh, today Claire I want to I want to get into your like LARP origins but first um would you uh, explain your role within Profound Decisions so I'm the game director Mm -hmm. I'm a member of the game team so we're the core group who make all the big decisions for running the actual game oh did you start oh did you start out uh LARPing so uh, <laughs> this is going to age me now. The, yeah. <laughs> you can hear the music. Yeah, yeah. So in 1997, <laughs> um, oh. at Swansea University Role Playing Society, they all went to the gathering and I didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they went on and on and on about it all year. And it was really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> really annoying <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't want to get involved because it was that mm. annoying yeah. and then eventually um somebody they'd met at um, an LT event came down mm-hmm. to visit for the weekend and he he took the time to explain it to me mm. <laughs> without yeah. without being as um rabid as the rest of the group were <laughs> 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 and at that point I was like okay this sounds interesting this sounds interesting so at the end of 98, I went and Monsters uh, Dragons faction event that was running in Candleston, which is in South Wales and near our house. And that was great. Uh-huh. And then the next year, I went and played a sanctioned event for the Bears faction. Uh-huh. And that was great. And that was it then. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> I LARPed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like, so the gathering is like now the Lorian Lorian Trust. Trust, right? Ah, right, yeah. right, right, got it, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so fa- yeah. like the factions, they're, I'm assuming they're like the, like they're nations and things like that, is it? Or Yeah, that's their equivalent of nations. Yeah. So they, they, they've all got animal names. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You say you, cru- you, you were crewing it? Um, there was a big thing to go and monster because um, they were much less social events and much more like our sanctioned events for the plot. Right, okay. Right, so okay, people yeah. are always looking for monsters to go and be orcs and goblins and, and cannon fodder. Okay, what was your what was your what was your <laughs> what was your uh, what was your main monster then for that event? I I honestly can't tell you, but um <laughs> Can- Candleston site is sand dunes. Okay. There's a lot of sand dunes and woods down there. And I remember all us monster crew being one side of the sand dune and hearing the dragon's war band go down the other side of the sand dune. I'm just all crouched there in the dark with the moonlight and the anticipation that something was going to happen. Uh-huh. And, and yeah, that was, that was probably the magic moment that I was like, okay, I get this. You were hooked. <laughs> th- th- yeah. This is for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I've got a bit Robin. I think it was similar for you. Cause sometimes, yeah. So- sometimes when you, when you get really geeky about something, you can almost put people off and you're like, I want this person to come do this with me. Cause I remember how sheepishly I went to Robin and went, Oh yeah, I want to try this. <laughs> I want to try this LARP stuff. And I don't know whether you were like massively on board until about like maybe a couple of weeks before it. Where did you see LARP then? So, so we, yeah, so weirdly enough, like this is our little LARP origin. Um, well, I was, I was running a, uh, like a 5e D and D game. Well, it was, a, it was a, a middle earth um, version in, in fifth edition. And it was during 
the pandemic where lots of people were playing online role playing games. One of the players in that game, uh, we started talking about LARP. I don't know what what why it was brought up, but we started talking about LARP, and he was like, "Oh yeah, you know." I'd, it was like, I, I really want to give it a go. And I'm like, you know what? LARP always has seemed to me like it's like <laughs> the bottom of the barrel of ge- of geekiness. And because <laughs> I've done all like I've done trading cards. I've done cosplay. I've done D&D video games, all that. And I was like, LARP seems like um, the, like the very, the very bottom of the barrel. I, I would never do it. Uh, they, they used to like they used there was like a kid at school that did used to do it and he used to talk about it all the time um but the way he talked about it was maybe a little bit off-putting because he was like oh yeah like we go full contact and he was a bit he was a big he was like he was a big kid so it was basically yeah. like, oh, if you come with me and we'll you know we'll basically fight each other in armor i was like maybe not so decades <laughs> later we start talking about larp in this game and he said oh yeah i, li- I listened to um a podcast and it was the um it was a lot of noobs podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. And he was like, oh yeah. And, and they go to this thing called empire. And I'm like, oh, empire. So like, I, you know, I Google empire. Um, and uh, obviously the, uh, like Holly, Holly's video comes up. Uh, Mark Hume's video uh, comes up. And then I'm like, oh, this, this seems like something I would absolutely <laughs> love because we were very much like Robert and I were very much uh, playing D and D uh, very much for the role play side of it very yeah. much yeah. for the like yeah i like rolling dice and i like the game mechanics things like that but we, we could just sit at a table we would get to that point where we could just sit at a table and not even roll any dice we could just like role play and i was like oh and also we're cosplayers as well and i was like this just seems like massively up our alley so i, I sheepishly went into <laughs> robin's room and i was like so robin if i tried <laughs> larping <laughs> <laughs> would you do it with me and what was your response I think the line Robin? was would you LARP with me <laughs> <laughs> I, appreciate, I, I think I remember at the time yeah I was just like I was like if you want to do it we can do it sure <laughs> and you were like when you made your account and to this day you still um bring up the fact that one person's PID is right in between us because I took oh. a bit longer yes. to actually go was, sign up. That was the keen. So yeah, there's what there's one there's what there's someone got in. I don't know who that person is someone got in between between me going like, oh yeah, let's go LARP and uh, you're like, yeah, yeah, sure I'll do it later. And someone got in. <laughs> I, I love it when you can see that progression of sort of people's thoughts with things like that. Mm. But it's it's I mean if you if you Google up and look at it now it looks so so much better than it looked in the nineties. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 really cool. And and some of it is that photographers are just better, and some of it is that the the resources there are much better. Mm. I um my gran made me my first tunic. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> A lot of people yeah, do yeah. have uh, stories like that of. Oh yeah, I was wearing like mum's curtains, and it was it was basically just what you could find type thing. Oh, of course we use curtains. They're great big bits of fabric that are quite cheap. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. They, you know, we used to have like a production line in the student house mm. making shields before we went to events. Wow. So because yeah. because that was how we afforded things. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So so did you end up like playing it? like gathering or did you go into like crewing the the main gathering i played i played the entire time i played mm-hmm. um i played for 10 10 years about about and mm-hmm. then we sort of started to look for different things we could do and stretch mm-hmm. ourselves yeah so we we played um the first the first game matt ran was amiga mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and it entertains me that i played the first and last one of those <laughs> What, um, kind of, what kind of game was that then? Because I, I don't, I, I don't I've heard anyone talk about that one. Um, so that was before Profound Decisions uh-huh. was Amiga. Um, mm. Maelstrom was the first Profound Decisions game. Yeah. Um, Ami- Amiga was a lot. What was his crazy sort of high concept one where it was it was a bunch of different groups and different um, races in in some sort of dystopian post apoc fantasy. So not post apoc post apoc as in the previous civilization has collapsed. Right, yeah. Not, not yeah. Fa- right, yeah, got it, got yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, not not futuristic post apoc. <laughs> yeah, more, and, fa- and they more fantasy sort of... post apoc yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I only played the first one and the last one because it was it was it was something else that we'd have had to add in and afford really rather than anything else. Yeah. But that was where 
where you, you have everybody got a free text downtime and everyone got a personalized downtime and and it was it was a unsustainable crazy game <laughs> <laughs> i would love uh, if we all got personal downtime can we do that can we make that yeah happen? <laughs> everybody would love that except for us <laughs> So it's, in, it's, it's... You, so you basically had to like you you basically told every, each each individual player like yeah. oh yeah this is what you got up to this is what you what you did yeah yeah so they'd submit what they we'd because I was a player so we'd submit what we wanted to do and then we'd get a report on what we'd how that had gone yeah yeah is that is that kind of where like the idea of the like like the winds of like all the winds come from it's like it's instead of going oh yeah this is what your character's got up to you're like this is what the world's got up to. Sort of, because I think everybody's always been fascinated by what happens between events. Everybody in anybody game, every anywhere, yeah, has been fascinated by what happens between events. Um, and, and then the win wins are they're sort of part what happens in downtime and part plot, yeah, because they're a really good way of getting a lot or plot out to a lot of numbers of people. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I like the idea, like behind, like when it when it comes to wins and everything, especially when um when we first started in the game, I used it quite a lot to be like, oh, um, what would my character have been doing in this time? And obviously, we had the military units and everything, which was amazing to be able to be like, oh, well, they've already told us what happened at this place, so I can decide like how my character fit into this and what we were doing. But the ones where I was like, oh, what am I actually up to? And it was saying all the things that were happening in different areas. And I was like, oh, well, our our um, area is quite close to that. Maybe my character would have seen some of that. And that gives me some game with um, Navarre or something. I could be like, yeah. hey, yeah, you know. <laughs> that's that's sort of exactly what they are. Because they, they give you something to talk about and, and something to have opinions about as well. Yeah. And, and I, I know there's a lot of them to read, but the thing is, you don't have to read all of them. You could just read one and pick out of there something to go and talk to other people about. Yeah, I, I really like them as an idea. Yeah. And I'm just constantly amazed that Andy writes them. <laughs> it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. And it's, and it's amazing that they're there, you know, and it's... But I, I assure you, you can you can definitely get away for a long time without reading any wins <laughs> because I did for so long. I think, I think in my first full year, I think I I I came into the game having only read the uh, I think it was, it was like the dawn the dawn night errant brief. That's the only one I read like a couple of times, and I had I had an idea of what uh, obviously what to expect like gameplay wise. You know what was going to go mm. on at the weekend, but when it came to like what was going on in the world i i came in completely blind in that aspect and just expected everyone to tell me and that could that totally worked by the way you could totally do that. <laughs> that's good because i tell people that all the time yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. The they're, they're sort of add-ons aren't they it's yeah. like you can read this and know this much more and if you've got the time and the capacity you can read all of them and if you've got a little bit of time you can read two yeah yeah, because some some I think I think it's it's what's enjoyable for certain people. Sometimes people will like to just go try and go beyond their understanding when they're reading this type of thing. Whereas mm. I know for I know for me, uh, Robin, you've said this to me before as well. Sometimes like if the first few sentences I don't understand what's what's going on or I don't understand references, then it's usually like ah well whatever. <laughs> I'll just I'll ask, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll ask I'll ask I'll ask someone else. You know. Yeah, I like yeah. My way of doing it, I just get like Oliver reads them. And then he summarizes them for me. <laughs> and a little easy to digest bites. Like, yeah. this is a bit you need to know. You're involved with this. I'm like, perfect. Mm. <laughs> that's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's it. And, and they're kind of like the wiki, you know, it's a massive chunk of information. But you don't need all of it. But it's there for you if you want it or if you need it. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. recently the uh, all the, the, the cold sun stuff that's just come out basically. Oh my gosh. Obviously, that was that was a lot of uh, a lot of text there on and there's a lot going on there's like there was like nine armies and literally like like yesterday where we we just we kind of sat there and i was like reading through them instead of robin reading them i was just like <laughs> oh this has happened oh oh the 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 the, the marcher armies have done this and that they've defeated them oh yeah they apparently they just teleported somewhere <laughs> you know <laughs> it was that's like... all i need i need one sentence and i will run with that yeah. i will be opinionated about it i will go for it and people can correct me on the field <laughs> but but... yeah that's great because that's that's 
people talking to each other, which is yeah. ultimately the game. Yeah, yeah, because because it, it's a little bit like a news like a news feed, then, isn't it? Because it's like it's almost like oh, not a news feed, like watching the news. Because I'm like I'm literally <laughs> reading it, and then I'm going, oh yeah, the, it, it, so apparently they can teleport now, and Robin's like, what, you know, type thing. <laughs> it's just like it's like re it's like seeing it on the news, you know, and then. You know, it doesn't mean that everybody has to sit and watch the news. You, you're going to go off and you're going to tell other people, you know. But if you're really interested in what's happening, you're like, oh, I'm going to sit down and uh, binge, binge all this, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's there for you to, mm. yeah. It's there for you to get your empire fix. So, yeah. Um, you were you involved in um, in, in Maelstrom then? But so, Ma so Maelstrom was <laughs> the first game. Right, you're not allowed to mock me about what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> no promises. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I played the first couple of years of Maelstrom. Mm. And then I quit in a massive strop and wrote a huge letter of complaint. <laughs> because, because of the game? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect it to go that way. <laughs> Please elaborate. <laughs> I've always had opinions about things. <laughs> mm, yeah. No, we, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not a time I'm necessarily proud of. <laughs> no. So it was just, just the game, the game just wasn't for you, though, or was it was like uh, mechanics wise or just the way it was run? Or... So th this is actually entirely our own fault because mm. Maelstrom was um, the nations of the old world crossing the Maelstrom to go to the new world. Mm -hmm. So obviously we had to be special, so we played new world natives. So we were okay. setting ourselves up for a fall before it even started. Right, okay. Because <laughs> we, we weren't playing the characters that the game was orientated for necessarily at the start. Okay, yeah. And then we shouldn't have been surprised when it didn't all work our way. <laughs> oh, I see. right, I see. I see. Yeah. I see. Uh, put, putting that into like a an empire perspective, it's something that like from from my point of view, that's something that you guys managed to avoid quite well where like that there's I, I very rarely do i see like and it, a lot of the time it's the community that keeps the people coming in in check like the community's great like the you know the new like new players currently are like putting in their kit and being like oh i want to do this or i want to be you know i want to be a, a thief and people are just like but oh that's awesome but by the way this is you know this is what to set your expectations at is that something that is you find is easier with yeah, this game that's one of the things i think i'm most proud about with empire is we we've got that that sort of community cohesiveness where people want people to come into the game and enjoy it and people understand that setting expectations is part of that yeah. you know if, if you yeah if you go yeah yeah come turn up. one of the emails we see quite a lot is um people wanting to play a sort of Strider-esque loner. Yeah. <laughs> and that it's, sounds brilliant, but a, then you spend three days in the field not talking to anyone. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's the best it's the best fantasy archetype that no one should ever play in a role-playing game, basically. <laughs> so what I try to say to people is like, that's great, that's a concept you could play, but you might find that you feel a bit excluded or bored doing that. Um, and that empire is very much a social game it's very much based on interactions and talking to people in your nation and things like that mm. so if you want to play it do it but make sure you give yourself an out yeah. so you can stop being a loner and start being yeah. a social character if you want to yeah. do, you, do you always get i mean i know you get a lot of emails but do you get a lot <laughs> of new players going can i do this can i do this can i do this Yes, we get a reasonable number i think we probably get less emails than we used to because i think the online community is so much better yeah. now yeah yeah because you, you're just gonna bigger yeah but yeah bigger you're gonna you, you throw something out there you're like oh yeah i want to you know play this and yeah like, like i said literally today i've been reading some like uh new uh new player posts and and people are very very good i mean i don't know what it is but I, it must be because we all actually have to see each other face to face because it's quite an anomaly on the internet <laughs> to have an internet community yeah, that's like, that nice <laughs> and welcoming. Our yeah. one in particular is just so like those um those Facebook groups. And before Empire, I kind of like got to a point with Facebook where I was like, oh, I just can't stand Facebook. It's everyone's so mean on there and so opinionated. And then I was like, oh, everything's on Facebook for Empire. I'm going to have to go back to it. And I was like, wow, 
this is where all the nice people are because people will post up a picture being like, yeah, hey, I've got this. Could this work? And if it's not entirely like on brief or anything, people don't sit and say that in the comments. They're like, hey, this bit's amazing. You know, this is really, really great. You've done here. If you add this, it'll be more on brief. Or if you take away this and it's so supportive and you're like, wow, this is how you bring someone <laughs> into a hobby and we were cosplayers before that. And I feel like cosplay is quite gatekept in a lot of senses when it comes to things like that. But this community is like, no, in you come, you know, welcome. We'll show you around, you know, we'll help you with this. And it's just so wonderful. That's really good to hear because we've worked quite hard to to keep, get and keep that culture. We've been quite open about what we want the culture to be. Mm -hmm. And I should probably name check our mod team because they work so hard to to try and maintain that yeah yeah, yeah welcomeness yeah. yeah they really do they do so well and the mods i mean not just on facebook i noticed that quite a lot of the mods are in all the different forums and everything as well and the um they'll come to the facebook group with questions from the forums so that those people that don't have access to one side are still getting that bridged and that's just people that's just like players and things that are doing that and it's just so wonderful <laughs> <laughs> it's great and of course it's in all our interests because we've got a game that, that looks a certain way and works a certain way and let's just keep making that better not sliding yeah 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 so, yeah so circling back around to, so you you you, you weren't overly happy with Mel's <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah Mel the well, thing, thing is like the thing is like obviously it wasn't it wasn't the best game that could be run because you you know you you'd still be running it you know so um so did did you uh, then jump obviously you jumped the fence at some point and when yeah so um we sort of stopped having fun at the Lorient interest and we were looking for other games to play after a while so we, we went around and we tried a few games and nothing really grabbed us and it was like well we've got to scratch our LARP itch somehow so it's like well we didn't enjoy playing it's not maybe we would enjoy crewing it so I wrote Matt a sort of gravely apologetic email <laughs> 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 and explained that we'd like to come and crew and this is because this is some of the other people from the Swansea groups as well not just me so, yeah and I explained that, you know, we could follow simple instructions <laughs> and, and we <laughs> he could trust us to carry out basic tasks and could we come and play, please? Yeah. Come and come crew, please. And he said yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's... I mean that's a good indication though like if, if you're yeah if you're vocal about like hey i don't you know I don't, I don't i don't like the game and then you're like oh actually you know can we can we come over and you know uh help but you, you they kind of know that you're there to try and make it better <laughs> <You know? laughs> or experience what it's like you know so. yeah. yeah yeah i don't come across good well in that story do i <laughs> <laughs> hey, no no well well really it is important <laughs> to not stay doing something that's not making you happy and um they're never going to know why you've left <laughs> if you don't vocalize that and constructive that's it if you don't complain back, nobody knows that they should be fixing it yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> <laughs> there are ways to do it but you know <laughs> okay. so you see so you, so you were the, the crew on um on maelstrom and then there was was there there was odyssey in was odyssey in between or was odyssey like like rank and currently odyssey sort of adjacent to the end of it was sort of adjacent to the end of maelstrom and the start of empire yeah. and did you did you have anything to do with the running of odyssey i, I didn't no no i wasn't involved in odyssey at all um okay. when um when empire started we we had we had these ideas for a, a new player support team mm -hmm. but we hadn't they weren't what they what the the team is now we sort of yeah. had ideas about running more plot towards them and things like that but yeah. as as evolution happened those plans changed so um i came on board with that team which was involved with the egregores mm -hmm. as well um i'm also on record as i should probably confess again um the reason i'm part of that team is because i didn't think egregores could possibly work <laughs> Really, <laughs> it's it's quite a unique thing. Well, I'm saying unique. I, I, I'm saying that with authority. I don't know. I, I don't know whether other big fest larps have something, uh, something similar um, around the world. But it is it is something that is quite, um, yeah, unique because they're not 
they're not really NPCs, are they? You know, they are NPCs, but what they aren't is leaders. Okay. And and that was the bit I was struggling to see working. Mm-hmm. I c- I couldn't see how they wouldn't be end up being seen as the sort of leader of that nation. Uh-huh. And and people said things to me like, "Well, you should probably be involved then if you think that <laughs> to stop it happening." And um, yeah, yeah, I was called on my nonsense. <laughs> I mean, like the 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 whole. The whole support at Empire is pretty incredible. I mean, you mentioned like egregores and things, and um, we're we're in a field with thousands of people for a full weekend with um no real way of communicating with one another. Most of us don't have phones or anything on us, and wouldn't use them anyway. So it is a weird sort of safety thing sometimes when you think about it that way. But people like the egregores are just always so visible, and I always feel like if something happened or something went wrong. Um, obviously you'd go to find crew members but the egregores are there like all night in your nation and you know yeah. exactly where they're sleeping exactly <laughs> where they are and you know that in an emergency they can radio someone Um, it is such a great thing that works but it does like when you actually like hear it on paper you're like how how does that work because it, it doesn't sound like you were saying it doesn't sound like it would work but it just it does <laughs> I know I know I think that's down there's a lot of credit to be given to um, the first people recruited to be in that team because they set a certain standard for everybody who's followed on and, and they did a fantastic job of of making the role what it's become because mm-hmm. we only had one in each nation at the start. Yeah. Um, and and I it took it took us longer to cotton on that that wasn't really the answer and there needed to be yeah. two or three of them mm-hmm. so that you had different personalities and different people you could go to for different things and and so they they had a bit of backup for each other and didn't feel guilty if they went and met lunch out the character or anything like that well i mean <laughs> like every time i interact with an egregore it's very much like i'm interacting with another player you know this is what it it kind of feels like you know it's not i don't um like i get a very like you said they are npcs but obviously they, they, it feels like cause you have like that relationship with your egregore like you know that they're, they're kind of just like playing with you but then when they're like another NPC comes in, it's like a different interaction to what you're, what you're getting from your egregore. You never, you never really feel like, sometimes I forget, sometimes I forget that they can't like, cause they, they can't hold titles or anything, or they can't, <laughs> they're supposed to just like feed, <laughs> just drip feed game, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're, they're there. I mean, a lot of what they're there for is moral support, just to give people, they should be sort of, if they find people who are a bit outside or struggling to get involved, it's just push them in the right direction. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah, actually, I, yeah. I, I love our Lego Gores mm. and Dawn, I absolutely love them so much. <laughs> and they've just been like, they, they, they have supported us so much. And uh, what, what I find with our Lego Gores is I, I sometimes I don't just know where they are until I'm trying to make a decision to do something. I'm like, oh, I don't know if I should do that. And then they appear and they're like, yeah, you should yeah. do that. And I'm like, yeah, you should just go, go, go. Like a... <laughs> make the bad decision, yeah, like, a like uh, angel. pushing. <laughs> I was like, it was like Oliver's, um, like our first ever event. Oliver, um, as a brand new player, um, went straight for a title. He had no idea what he was doing or anything, and it was the Egregore standing there being like, you know, even new players can come and try this. And he's like, okay, <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> little, little, little did you know that I was gonna be like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll go, I'll go. Do I'll go it. run yeah. for general. Yeah, okay. Oh no, that, that's 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 brilliant. That's. that's exactly what i want our new players yeah. to do i never want them to think they should serve their time or anything like that before they apply for something just yeah. just go for it yeah. yeah actually this has come up a couple of times i think this this well, i think there's someone in our group discord server as well that was asking about this maybe you can clear this up so because some people have like played one character and then like i want to change nations and i this I, I i know how it kind of works in dawn but how would they go about because some people don't think they can don't even realize they can do that how do they go about changing nations in play with their same character they go and talk to the egregores of the nation they want to change to and convince them that they would be a really good marcher or you any or whatever it is yeah and the, the egregores will role play it through with them so they might they might sort of ask them to do Ask some questions or ask them to do little challenges or things like that to prove that they'd be a that definitely you as any not Dornish or wherever they're choosing to go to. It's it's 
and then they'll they'll do a little thing where they'll welcome them into the nation. They might take it over a couple of events. They're quite good at judging what the other person wants. Yeah. And the level of fuss they want as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because some people want to have like there's some people that have come into Dawn that are like yeah, give them a, give them a proper like test of metal plus another test of metal. Give them a test of metal to come into the, to the nation <laughs> and want to become a noble if they want to just come straight in as a noble and and people love that. Um, but I think yeah, the other people are just like, oh no, actually, I just I feel like I just picked the wrong nation at, at first and yeah. I just want to slip into the into another nation, but I don't want to like change my character name or anything, you know. Yeah, that's it. Some people want to be shouted about in the middle of the glory square, and some people don't. And and judging that is a skill. Yeah. Um. What we do do for new players is after their first event, we'll change everything for them without sort of fuss or question. Okay, so you mean, yeah. so like the, like their, what they choose on their character sheet when they create their character? Every, after their first event, we'll change anything for them mm. because you don't know until you turn up to that field what it really is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you might think fighting sounds brilliant and then discover that being hit is a terrible idea. <laughs> you know? And it's like, well, we can just make that work for you. Because yeah. the after you've been to a couple of events, you should be getting a handle on it. And we'd expect yeah. you to go through the systems to change these things. Yeah. 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 Because I know we were very lucky in that we chose the right nation and the right archetypes for us. Like we slipped in. We were like, this is great. This is perfect. But I, I know <laughs> that not everybody has that. Um at first they come in and like, oh yeah, I want to be a priest. And then they're like, oh, actually, I, I think I'd prefer to do magic and things like that. So it's, it's good that you let people uh, um, rejig things around. In fact, I think yeah. Robin, actually, you were because we, I didn't, you were like, well, I don't know about fighting. Well, I don't know about that. And then you went and did it once that big, those, that big battle. <laughs> and then you were like, <laughs> I want all the fighty abilities. <laughs> this is the best thing ever. That's the thing though, like we were talking earlier about, you know, like the moment when you really like watch LARP and we're talking about things like before the events. I can remember the exact moment when I went, this is the, this is the hobby for me. And it was on that battlefield with zero armor, a little dagger and a really tiny sword in the front line of a battle with all of Dawn around <laughs> me and just seeing these orcs run at me. And at that moment, I went, yeah, the, 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 this, this is <laughs> yeah. where I want to be. This, this is amazing. Is... <laughs> <laughs> Every single worry from my real life has just disappeared in this moment. <laughs> and all I want to do is beat up that particular orc <laughs> right there who's trying to insult me. <laughs> yep, yep. And, and that's, that's like the sort of beautiful bit about the hobby, I think, like, we're all in character and doing our things, but I think sometimes there's these little perfect moments when it's real. You know, it's <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of it's, it's great. Yeah, a lot of it's like the recall, isn't it? As well, like you see, like it, it's it's retelling it. Um, because because I know it's a little bit like some like tabletop like role playing games. Like it doesn't become real until yeah. like it's it's like that it's it's like those neural pathways are the same for like mem real life memory creation so in in the moment you're like oh we're all sat around the table and we we you know we use the our character sheets to jump the chasm or we're on a battlefield and someone shouted cleave and blah 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 but it's not until you then tell the story and it might just be especially in the case of larp 20 minutes later you're retelling it and then that's when it really comes to life because you don't you 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 just kind of blank out like when you run the movie of what just happened like it's not you know a, a load of nerds with foam swords and a ref standing there it's like you know i was like someone chopped my leg i went down uh, <laughs> so yeah. my friend came in and <laughs> saved me you know yeah we were total heroes yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's true it's... though and it's just like oh the the immersion in this game as well is like um that, that scene when when our last characters died that every time i think about that moment i did not see people in latex masks i saw yotun in a circle and i they were yotun they were not people at all beneath those masks the immersion was so incredibly real and i think it's because i wasn't expecting that many emotions to happen like i think i cried more in that oh. hour 
than I have ever done before actually <laughs> like it was like oh there's so many emotions I can't process all of this am I calling sick to work after this this is too much <laughs> there's um the winds of war that have just gone up in the Calvasi one there's a bit where um he's written about the swamp and the little wooden jetty that goes out into the swamp yeah yeah and that's a few years ago we held a big winter mark um, conjunction where everybody went to the swamp to see the heroes go yes and you might have seen the photos of it there's a big ring of winter markers standing around that was the in character location for that oh right okay because <laughs> right, we, okay. we built a little jetty out across the field and made everybody stand in a semicircle around the banks yeah and and i don't get to sort of play empire mm-hmm. but i my character my character is a is a winter marker uh-huh. And I managed to sneak out on that as my character oh. with, my, with my group. So when I read read sort of Andy's words in that Winter of War, I was just like, oh, I was there. But the memory. <laughs> I tell you what, it's, yeah, it was quite. It, it it took it took a while, right? But when you, we first came into Empire, um, then there's there's people that have been playing it for, you know, several years previously. We came in there after the pandemic as well, so it was like the people have been playing it for a long time, and they would tell stories like that like oh yeah you know the entire nation of Windermark went through the sentinel gate you're like wow because that's not that's an irregular thing you're like oh to to do this non-combat uh thing um people talk about these skirmishes that were very unique and you're like oh this is an amazing story and then it wasn't until we came back from uh the baron's conjunction where all of dawn went through uh to hallow the shrine of hope um, and I was like, we came back and I was like, you know what's really cool? That's one of those moments where new players are going to come next year and we're going to say, oh yeah, we did this thing once where we all went through the Sentinel Gate and we spoke to ghosts and things like that because it was so unique. And I'm like, oh, cool. I, that, that's <laughs> that's such a unique like thing I can now tell. I can I can I've, I now have a legacy as a player because those characters unfortunately aren't around anymore. No. Uh, but oh. but as like as a player I have like this legacy now of like oh yeah this one this one time we all went for the Sentinel Gate as Dawn. Yeah, yeah that's cool. It's very cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was just reading it. I was like I was there. <laughs> yeah. So you said you've got like your your Wintermark character when it comes to your time in Empire um have you been like um have you had a player character at all while you've been um in the game of empire or have you mainly had like your your r&r character instead so i i I very loosely got a character who's a civil servant very loose okay so so that that's (laughs) that's my costume i'm out on the field on and i'm technically a, a civil servant um, so I used to be the Secretary General and the Civil Servant, but um, Leonardo was much better at that. So I've I've retired in favour of of Leonardo taking taking that role. So um, so he's my boss now. They're my boss. <laughs> um, and, and I'm very loosely in a group in Wintermark, which is the group all my old mates are in. Aww. Which means that um, when I get a chance, I go down and they make me a cup of tea. Nice. And I drink half of it, and then I go. I'm really sorry. I've got radio. <laughs> Run off. I've got, I've got to go. <laughs> so what's what's most of your event taken up with? Is it taken up with new player stuff these days, or? Oh, so Fridays we run all the new player meetings and the player support mm-hmm. sessions. Mm-hmm. So Fridays from midday is all managing that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, because I'm a monster, I make all of the field NPCs go to a meeting at nine o'clock every morning. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> don't need to be nine. Just... <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm a monster. The worst bit of it is that I have to go as well, though. <laughs> mm. yeah. um, and I make however many I can of Matt, Andy, and Graham go as well. Yeah, too right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our sort of chance where they all give us the headlines of what's been happening in the nation or their civil service department and we get a chance to tell them any sort of overarching things we need them to know mm-hmm. and then they break off and go and talk to individual plot writers and whoever as needed yeah, I mean, so that's, that's that sounds difficult to keep to a strict strict schedule because right? <laughs> you've probably got a lot of information that everyone wants to tell you all at once right yeah, yeah. So we we've broken it down, and we're quite we're quite strict. And 
Uh, but we do slip over the year and then we start each year with better intentions. Yeah. So it's sort of like <laughs> headlines, Navarre, go. Headlines, <laughs> Eurison, go. Headlines, Highgard, go. Yeah. By the time we get to E4, it's like, oh, it's 11. We're still trying here. <laughs> We try to keep it to about 40 minutes and then, of course, they can break off and have longer conversations yeah. Yeah. as they need to with, you know, small groups. Yeah. Um, and then I go from that to the gate opening because mm. that's my favourite bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's something else, isn't it? It's something it is. else. <laughs> yeah, that's my absolute favourite bit. When all the nations go through and they're all so distinct from each other. I really like that, and yeah, and everybody's excited and ramped up, ready for it. I love it. It's it, that's <laughs> one of the be- that is uh, yeah that is one of the best parts of the the weekend. I've said this to a few people actually. What what's what's really unique about the whole even just even just uh, like LARP in general, right? You you can you could probably play like a video game, even if it was like a VR video game with you sword fighting, right? You could do that type of thing. You could you can kind of go right where we are. Uh, we're playing a role playing game where we're trading and we're buying houses and and things like that. But what what you really get at LARP is all the in between stuff, and that's the stuff that's like cinematic and it's it's you don't it 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 makes more of an experience because yeah, just going out through the Sentinel Gate having a fight and coming back is really cool. But it's like you get the build you get the builder you get the putting the armor on in the morning and you're like oh god I've got but I got butterflies or oh, I, I maybe stayed up a bit too late last night maybe I should, maybe I should have gone to bed <laughs> earlier because I've got to like lead lead a group of people through this central gate now you know and then you you all like you say you all uh, march your way up and then you have got the people that are staying in Amber and they're all like either you know waving waving goodbye or singing songs to you as you're walking up you know um, and then you've got that big moment at at the at the Sentinel Gate. Here's a question: Do have they? Uh, is that always how it was done with the Sentinel Gate, like the the egregores, like opening it up? We don't let them talk for as long now. <laughs> <laughs> so in the start, they were just like, "Yeah, go and go and say some words." <laughs> yeah, yeah. We used to let them talk for a lot longer, so we we really clamped down on that. Yeah, and everybody's happier for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, well, for one, obviously, it's uh, it takes a while, but also. There's a lot of people waiting at that Sentinel Gate now. It's becoming a little bit like, you know, the egregores are speaking, and the people that are like, they're basically at, at the at the gate between Dawn and the Brass Coast, and they can't hear what's going on anyway. So. No, 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 no. You've got to be in the front row, haven't you? Yeah. yeah. Um, but of course, we're sort of at the gate. We're coordinating both sides because we're coordinating what's happening at the gate, what the players yeah. are doing, how the players are coming through, and we're coordinating the monster side so everything happens yeah. on time. So I, if if you look, you'll see usually me, Emma and Tom sort of conferring and checking times with each other constantly. So we can do a countdown. We do a countdown on the Egregore's radios and we do a countdown on the Monster Team's radios at the same time so that everybody's oh, really? linked up. <laughs> yeah. Is that one of the main ones that really, really needs to be kept to that? strict schedule because like if that battle because something like the battle with that many people that can dawdle and can like oh yeah right we need to get back for the seminal gate surely that can that can run over and just and just go out of control can't it because you end up being like oh that's they've literally been out there for five hours now you know so a few years ago we were slipping and we were sort of we were getting later and later starting it because there, there's always a reason that somebody's not ready yeah yeah so we were getting later and later starting it so the last few years we've got a really strict 11 o'clock policy and then the, the battle starts at 11 no matter what yeah, yeah. even if we're shoving the egregores out of the way to get you through the gate or <laughs> or the monsters are timing in without you it starts at 11. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get through the gate or else the monsters are going to be there as you go through <laughs> exactly exactly and we've been pretty good on it i think yeah no th- yeah. Th- no there's there's no there's never really been a in fact, it's it's. Uh, I've only ever commented when it has seemed like a short battle because objective has have been completed. And you're like, oh, that was quick. Um, never have I been like, oh god, this this battle's like literally eaten our entire day type thing, no. have we? You know, no, not at all. Like I think sometimes when we're monstering because you're kind of like monstering no. on a Sunday is the worst because <laughs> it's like you're like, okay, it takes me so long to get all the character stuff on after this, and it's like I just want to get back, but at the same time, don't want to be that person who's like yeah. 
I'm going to go back early because I want to get into my stuff. So I'm like, it's not fair. They need a cool, epic battle because we probably got one yesterday. Yeah, they did it for us yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll go do the, the quicker makeup version today. <laughs> There's a whole art to battles and sort of designing and running battles, which is not my forte. Uh -huh. We've got a different team for that. Yeah. But there's a whole sort of art between balancing like coherent story and player agency and a good battle. It doesn't like it doesn't seem like fair enough. We have the the refs being like, right, you need to get through the gate because like you, it's gonna it's gonna shut off or whatever it's gonna do. Um, in fact, actually, that's a good question. How how do you balance like that out with like punishing people for like dawdling or making sure it's running on time especially when it's like thousands of people like you say with agency <laughs> that would be a tom question <laughs> <laughs> um how do you balance it's, it's one of these things uh, it's one of these frustrating things about laugh is quite often there's not an answer to anything it's like common sense and being nice yeah which can be a lot of hard work <laughs> yeah yeah and, and means that you don't get a, a a consistent result of things either because you sort of do what the situation needs um tom tom puts a lot of work into trying he work, he sort of writes the battle suggestions then works with andy and matt to make them more um and that's that's with the idea of a coherent story that ties in with plot a good battle but still has the option for if the players pull off something spectacular, they pull off something spectacular. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. it's 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 pretty it's pretty impressive. One thing that always like boggles my mind with it is that yeah, it seems like a very complicated thing to organise, um, but they still manage to give everybody choice, especially like the generals. It's just like um, with all the conjunctions i remember i think i don't know whether it was just because it was right after covid i remember that first ever event that we went to and we went to military council there was, was was there not something like six battle opportunities or something i think there, there was lo there's loads of them there was, there was like, a lot there was there was a lot and i think as new players at the time we're like wow there's yeah, so many they... things we can do i prefer the last few events so where those uh, it's, it's been a bit more it was well, been like we've had a few events where there's been like three opportunities and one could be taken on either the saturday or the sunday and i'm like this i like this seems a bit more like it's, it's it's less stuff for us all to read to try and figure out where we should be going and um some of them are a bit more obvious as well when it's like well obviously Don's going to pick that one obviously yeah. the march is going to pick that one i'm sure nothing bad will happen between us picking the wrong one <laughs> it's, it's like Tom says half the work he does never gets used yeah that, yeah yeah <laughs> cuz Sometimes he can reskin it for something else, but not a lot of the time. Yeah, no, I, yeah, like I can, I can totally see that. And sometimes, I, I guess it's, the, I guess it's because people are just the same, you know. If you like, if you're running like a D and D game, you're just like, oh, I'm going to give the players a choice because you know you got to give them a choice. But I'm pretty sure they're going to go this one. They're going <laughs> to, they're going to like love this one. They're going to salivate at the mouth of this one. They're just like, nah, let's go do with this other one. You're like. <laughs> Oh. You're never gonna let me. You're never gonna gonna forgive me for that, are you? Look, he made this whole thing, okay, in a cave. There was a troll, but I had like really good perception. I was like, "There's a troll in there. I don't fancy fighting a troll." And we kept walking, and there was a whole thing. And I think he pretty much just crumbled up his chance. I was like, "Fine, <laughs> you don't get the magical treasure. Then it's fine." <laughs> <laughs> That's it, because the day that Tom doesn't write up the other opportunity properly is the day that one will be taken. Yeah, yeah. So t tell us about the um, what goes on on the Friday with the new player stuff then, because this is what people ask about a lot. And also, yeah. I, like I, I was hearing like new things, like like last event, which was like my eighth event, and someone was like, "Oh yeah, they run this on the Friday. It's like a thing for priests." I'm like, "I have no idea that even runs." So what what goes on on the Friday for new players? So, so my, my sort of idea about um, the player support team, because I've been trying to rebrand it a bit more as player support over new player, because mm -hmm. just because you've been playing for a while doesn't mean to say you can't get help. <laughs> um, 
we were in a whole raft of things on Friday because my my theory is that what we do is try and resu- remove sources of anxiety about the game. Yeah, because that that's what stops you wanting to do something. So anything we can tell you that makes you a bit more confident about that is great. So we started off um, about four years into the game, just running the new player meetings, and we ran one a day, and we had about six people at them, and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's it like now? <laughs> so that's just like the new player meeting, which is just basically me and the Agri Girls talking to the new players to the game. So we run three of those events and they're all the same. Okay. Because people turn up at different times of day and Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's to try and manage numbers. Yeah. Um and that's just really us sort of giving an overlay of what's on the field and where you can go to do things. And a lot of it is taken up with who to talk to if you don't know what you're doing <laughs> or have a problem because it's just it's just trying to give people that confidence to go, right, I don't want to talk to anybody. I'm a bit shy, but I can go in the hub and read all the notice boards. Yeah. Or my tent's flooded. I should tell my everyone and they'll get somebody to help me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're trying to cover that whole sort of scope with that. So we started running those, and then we realised that there was um, there was a whole sort of opportunity for us to do other stuff. So mm-hmm. I think we might have started with the introduction to magic first, because because we wanted to talk to people about what you say when you cast a spell. Yeah, because it sounds really easy until you actually have to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I've got a bit like you said, like the anxiety type thing. Sometimes, like I'm just like. Oh wow! Because and then obviously you know you were surrounded by confident role players that are just doing it. And you're just like, wait, what? Am I supposed to say a certain? Say, what am I like? Is is there a rule for this? You know, and and obviously a lot of us don't have the access to the wiki on the field either. So we're just like, I can't. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing here. Yeah. So exactly, exactly. And the thing is, all those confident role players you're surrounded by um, aren't competent. No. <laughs> No, I'm just role play and being competent. <laughs> no, yeah, so I don't know what you're talking is. about. <laughs> I, yeah. include, I include myself in that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's the magic of it, though, isn't it? Because yeah, it's, it wasn't until like I I've done it and people were just like, oh yeah, you know what what you said was really inspiring. I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just totally just making it up as I go along. I just I just I had to say something to fill the silence, so I just said this, you know. So, so we drafted players in to run that because they're the ones who do it. Yeah. yeah. So I think they talk about um, how to get involved in conclave and battle magic and just casting spells. Mm-hmm. Um, and then more people sort of piped up with suggestions and offers to run things. Um, and the, the new player skirmish, bizarrely, is quite new. Um, oh, really? We, yeah, we, we were doing a new player meeting and um, I handed over to somebody else, um, Kiora, who used to be in the battle team. Who uh, is a Vexil? <laughs> um, he he sort of made an offer. He said, "At the end of the meeting, I'm going to stand in the corner, and if anybody wants to come and hit me to see if they think they're hitting too hard or not, they can come and hit me. But I'm going to hit you back." <laughs> and he had this huge queue of people. Oh, really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, and none of us had thought about this. You mm. don't actually hit people very often in real life. No. No, but I mean, you, yeah, I mean you, yeah. you, you, you shouldn't ever, really. <laughs> so we're all like, yeah, it's a laugh hit. Yeah. But that doesn't mean anything, does it? Yeah, well, it's, just, it's, it's a, like the pulling blow things I do find is a is a real difficult one to, like, what's the word, like quantify, like what is, you know, an appropriate hit and what's not, because one, I could go, right, what, how I might, you know, hit robin with a foam sword might be different from what uh who i'd hit a total stranger to what i'd hit a child to someone who is wearing like lots of armor as well and i'm like if i don't give this a little bit of welly this person isn't going to know that i've literally just hit him because he's wearing five layers of padding yeah. and <laughs> metal so and it's harder to manage when your adrenaline is up Th- that, and yeah. your yeah. weapon is harder when it's cold and everything hurts more on Sunday morning when you're tired. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so many answers. So when, when Kiora did that and it was taken up well, we were like, okay, this is stupid. We should have thought about this sooner. 
so we started running the new player skirmish so that's um that's only for new players because we want it to be quite controlled yeah yeah and tim baker when who was yeah general in the league mm-hmm. he's built up a team that run that nice of of experienced lot fighters and the idea is it's a space where you can go and be hit and get hit and make mistakes and get called out for it sort of safely and with an explanation rather than in the heat of a battle yeah yeah like yeah. it's 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 so good that like we we did the so we did the new player skirmish um and we did the the new player meeting and everything um mm. on our first event and I think the that's the skirmish, only thing we did, right we, we, we i think so because like in my head there was a third one but i actually think there wasn't um so we did the we yeah we did the new player skirmish and that was that was a bit like of an eye opener because we had no idea what to expect or anything um and i remember it was tim that was like leading that one and everything and yeah we put us into the two different situations so oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. the really the, the, the two hard situations they put <laughs> us into a donut yeah. and then they also did like a fighting retreat didn't they yeah yeah, yeah. see the fighting <laughs> retreat i think is tim's our character in character sort of manipulation to try and uh, teach everybody so uh you can pull it off on the battlefield. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, because like the death donut, it's like it's not really a winnable situation. But yeah, like the the um the fight and retreat, have, having yeah d- done like witnessed a, a few of them now, it's like it's probably teaching people like you know what like a controlled like move back is going to be so much better or stand your ground is going to be so much better than turning and running. <laughs> so... Yeah, I think it's like get them when they're new. I could teach them from the start. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, no, it was it was super valuable. I'm assume I'm assuming that they're, they're uh, doing similar scenarios because bear in mind, Robin, that was like coming up two years ago when we did I it. Know. So... <laughs> yeah, so be- the before the pandemic we'd also we'd do that and they do half orcs and half humans for those fights oh, right, but okay. obviously we can't do that with the masks anymore because mm. we we have much better sanitization policies on the masks yeah so yeah. so what so what is the the because because you can kind of predict now i'm like because at first i thought obviously with the with obviously we had you know worldwide pandemic um with all that but what's what's the actual policy with the actual orc masks now is it just one day on and one day off with the mass or do you have to have new mass for each day or what we use it we've got a number a large number of masks we use mm-hmm. them once yeah um and then so what we used to do is we used to use them sort of do like a low level sanitizer and dry them out for the next day and we don't do that anymore they go back to mandala to be properly sanitized for the next event thoroughly sanitized for them properly yeah yeah oh that's really good i did, I did actually realize that happened that's really good yeah yeah so i'm assuming that was obviously obviously the pandemic kind of uh kind of spurred that thinking on i imagine but um yeah so they always were sanitized but we we worry less during yeah. an event about it yeah mm. yeah um, and I see you bringing in some non-orc enemies anyway in the world. So, <laughs> yeah. I, guess that's, I guess that helps. Well, the Empire does like to open a new front, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a front right, right in the backyard. Especially a lovely, scary one. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. yeah, I understand that historically opening up a new front at every opportunity works well. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is it is fascinating, like because it does because like playing an empire and it's like how we know like in real world history how these types of things inevitably go anyway. Um, is always it's always fun. It's always fun to know that you're like doomed, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless them, bless them. <laughs> be fine. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I don't. I don't think the Colson's that bad. I think it'll be fine. I think you'd be fine. Now you've got a handle on it. It'll be all right. Oh, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, I was like, again, yesterday, I was like, oh, uh, this is happening, this is happening. And you're like, oh, 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 and I'm like, but we're winning. Like, we're, like they're doing some crazy stuff, but we're, we're pretty much we're pretty much kicking ass at the minute. So it's all, it's all good. It'll be fine. No, 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 no. They're tricking us. They're tricking us so that, that the skirmish is going to come up and we're going to be like, we've all just read those wins. We'll be fine. Let's all go on the skirmish. It's not okay. <laughs> People are terrified, by the way, Claire, of these skirmishes. Oh, we're like, so scared. <laughs> People yeah. are terrified of these skirmishes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm not saying I'm not going to do one of them. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to oh, have yeah. to do one of them, but you know. <laughs> it's better, is it? It's it's the buzz from doing something hard and just scraping through is so much better. Yeah, it's it's difficult because, yes, one of the best like stories that we tell is when we did that um, Agraman Herald skirmish, <laughs> the, you know, the first one we did, um, and everyone died, and oh. it was pitch black, and because it was during it was during winter, right? It was it was, uh, oh no, no, it was autumn, wasn't it? Oh, it, whatever, it was it was, autumn, but it was it, was, it was dark. Yeah, it was re- it was really dark, like during it, and it was ter- the, the the skirmish went really bad, and uh, we we barely got barely got out of there. I've never been so tunnel visioned in my life. <laughs> like a oh, big monster. And all I remember is you grabbing my arm and be like, we need to run. Oh yeah. Now. So, yeah. So so for, for Robin's character's test of metal, she had to um like fight a creature of the winter realm one on one. And we knew we were going in to go kill this Herald of Agraman. <laughs> so Robin's character and the Robin, stalker. The other stalker was like, right. I'm going to basically if I just get a hit off it, on it, then that's that's a, that's a tick, you know, type thing. <laughs> that counts. However, because it was so <laughs> dark and because our lines kept falling back, we ended up like Robin just ended up like so close to this thing, and then there was like an out of a character timeout where everyone went down because someone because someone unfortunately got hit hit in the eye and because it was pitch black. So we stopped for a second. Everyone was all right, but then we got when we. I'm looking around as we're on this time out, and I can see our our group like moving further and further up the hill, and we're surrounded <laughs> by Druge. And I'm like, okay, and I'm like, the ref's gonna say time in now, and uh, I'm like, I'm gonna have to get out of it. But I could see Robin was just like looking at this monster being like, right, as soon as time in comes, I'm gonna go hit the monster. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get. And I'm like, as soon as time in goes, I'm gonna grab Robin and just run. <laughs> did I'm... you get it yes yeah. <laughs> got to hit the monster Good. that's what was important you got the yeah. hit off. and i was like right Aaron, we need to we need to run now because like i'm pretty sure you were like oh look we got friends here i'm like no no these are all i thought all oh, i just saw bodies around just yeah. thought those were donish they uh, were not donish uh, <laughs> there was no donish there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they make they, they do those those ones where you're like oh like uh, skinny your teeth they make they do make for the best stories. Um, yeah. So circling back to the the new player thing, you've got you've got the new player skirmish. I I, I can't go. There's there's a there's, there's a timetable on the there? wiki because there's loads of them. Really. Um, and we're sort of so the only ones we restrict to new players are the new player meeting and the new player skirmish. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because we want those to be places where you can ask questions. Yeah. And and ask ask. There's no stupid questions, which yeah. is true. But yeah. you can ask the questions you're not sure about, yeah. and the questions you're anxious about, with no mm. nobody to yeah. comment on them. Yeah. Um, all the rest, <laughs> the introductions to magic, introductions to apothecary. Um, Martin Hobbsman's public speaking class, which of course is the most overpowered skill in LARP. It is, yeah, it is, yeah. Um, uh, Martin, I got to Ma- that one. Yeah, Martin's, Martin's really good at it as well. So, <laughs> so we, we've we've run all those th- we've run all those things as well, and anybody's welcome to go to those. Yeah, you know, if you change your character and you want to learn about magic, you go to the introduction to magic. Well, th- yeah, this is what I was just about to say because, yeah. like, I yeah pl- played for seven events and then for my new character last year, so I've almost been playing the game two years, and then I was like, oh, I'm going to take a. Uh, I'm going to take dedication. I'm like, I literally have no idea how Liao works or how to dedicate someone. I, it, it wasn't until someone went, oh, can you dedicate me then? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know exactly how I do that. but um... You have to like run to, to demigods. Well, yeah, because this was after. God, uh, um, yeah. At dawn to yeah. ask for some yeah. help. <laughs> yeah, because this was after the Friday. This was, uh, this was over the Saturday. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll just I'll run to God and just uh, double check. Okay, what do I actually need to... Uh, like mechanically, what do I need to do? Do I need to bring their PID? And then they cleared it up for me. Um, but by the way, yeah, the demigod like uh, is such a good addition to the field. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. I'm glad it's working. It's, um... <laughs> it's, it's so hopefully good. we can improve what it does over time. Mm. Mm. But we want to make sure anything we do to improve it is sustainable. Yeah. Because yeah. uh... it'd be really awful if we tried to god you know to run a god function down there and then we couldn't yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. i think one of the I one of to take the, it away so mm, i think what one of the, the the best part of it, obviously it's really handy um from a game point of view because you don't have to go all the way to 
big god if you're in like dawn or winter mark um and then every now and again i used uh, i would if i'm passing i need i kind of need to do something at god there was times where i was just like walking by it and i'm like oh it's free currently i'll just i'll just nip in as we're walking up to wherever we were doing uh but i think the the best thing about it is that you know on the field there's always going to be someone there with an earpiece in Basically. yeah, yeah. That, that was a big thing for me wasn't it because I'm always yeah, like yeah. going on about like the safety around the area yeah. and stuff and like having you know yeah. somebody with an earpiece yeah. nearby is yeah so if you're basically on the top of the hill in dawn and you're like oh I need you know for any type of emergence you're like oh I need someone with an earpiece you, you know you can kind of make a beeline for that god there's also it. always one in the civil service one straight on the academy well, there is. I didn't actually know yet. there was one in the yeah in the, yeah, the I, academy I, I, now I as didn't well. Know that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, of course there is, but like, I didn't even think about that before. But yeah, no, no. And your next point would be the tavern, the forge. They've got radios as well. Oh, do they? I yeah. didn't know that. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> That's so good to know. It's so good to know that like where like all these yeah. points are because like it's one of these things we don't ever want to be in a situation where we have to run and get somebody with an earpiece yeah. but it's just so good to know that there's they're all around us <laughs> yeah 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 in a non-spooky way they are all around <laughs> <laughs> all right. but that's the thing at least uh, like with the you know with the demigod you know that like especially if it's like a you know if it's a ref or there's someone sitting in that tent you know it's that tent because like you say yeah the the, the aggregate might be like two tents behind you but it's like sometimes it's difficult just to spot them you know because they're in they're in character if you just need to get someone quick snap you know there's definitely going to be someone there yeah yeah i'm quite pleased with them um, with what we sort of do for the new players at the moment but we're looking to, we're always looking to expand it yeah. um ab who's one of the speakers in the senate did a senate class last year and i think we're i need to speak to them here because i'm hoping we'll keep doing that Senate yeah. class, yeah. That sounds like a great idea, actually, because there, there are so many parts of the game, and it is, yeah, a, a big part of LARP is going out there, it's talking to people, it's getting yourself into that, but it's just, you have so much more confidence if you, you do know that you've got, like, a full day where you can go to all these out-of-character things and you can learn how to do different things and you can ask the the questions that you might think are silly and stuff like that. And it's just like little things that you don't really think about until they happen. Like the, the, um, the scenario you mentioned about like, yeah, your tent's flooded. What do you do? Because that's a situation nobody wants to be in, but a lot of people don't realize that like (laughs) it happens. And there's a lot of resources out there specifically for when that happens. Cause it says it might happen. Yeah. We we talk about it in the new player meeting because we're like, we say, say, you know, we've got a huge crew and they've got a lot of experience. They fix almost anything. Yeah. I've seen the red caps make somebody a tent pole. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, you know? <laughs> that's, that, that's good. <laughs> yeah, no, it, like, yeah we, 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 we borrowed things to like put up tables and things like that before haven't we Robin like if you obviously if you know they're there you're just like hey we've, we haven't brought an allen key we've got an allen key and uh Oh yeah, I think it was Woody that I was like ran to and he's got his big toolbox. I was like, that was like a great toolbox. I bet you have an Allen key in there, don't yeah. you? Because I specifically need an Allen key right now. Um, and he did, didn't he? Size, yeah. yeah, he did. Yeah. Every size. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. And it's making sure people know to ask these questions. Mm. You know, you're not on your own if something goes wrong. Yeah. You can probably fix it. Yeah. Um, have you got anything new? uh this year when it comes to like um new player stuff or um... so my problem right now is um i've only got friday afternoon yeah <laughs> and i've only got so many tents i can use <laughs> yeah i mean it's kind of <laughs> unless you start like running things like during the game it's kind of difficult yeah. isn't it yeah we we did we did used to do a new player meeting on saturday morning we stopped doing it because people just didn't want it no <laughs> I think it's too much stress on the Saturday morning, just like in with a lot of people, like obviously getting into kit for the first ever time and um, the logistics around that and stuff. I feel like a meeting then would be a struggle, really. You probably, it would be a case of you'd either get like a load of people at it or you'd get like nobody being able to to head there to it. Um, but the meetings, like that's what we've been like pushing everyone to. Like every time we get like a new player being like, oh, you know, I'm comics for my first time. We're like, yeah go to the meetings on the friday <laughs> just go to them if nothing else 
you're going to make friends with a lot of other new people. <laughs> <laughs> that that's that is a big thing about them because you see a bunch of other new people, and you will remember those faces, and you get to say hi to somebody later yeah. when you bump into them. Yeah, because you because you've got a little connection to tell stories to. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't want to be um overly uh, overly greedy with your time, Claire. Because I know you've got a big event to run in another <laughs> in another in a month's time. Is it so is there anything anything awesome. else exciting you want to say? Well, now you've got the uh, the platform. Oh, I should have prepared an answer to that, shouldn't I? <laughs> ah, swing it, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, think of something later and record it. And send it to me. <laughs> So, so I think I think the big thing, right, and the big thing I say all the time to people is ask questions. Yeah, just just ask questions. If you're not sure about something, ask somebody because you'll get an answer or you'll get pointed at an answer, and and your question isn't stupid because <laughs> I can guarantee somebody has somebody has asked something. It's all yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's all about uh, yeah. As um. Yeah, like this our, our third, coming into our third year of Empire, still, still, still loving it, right, Robin? Still, uh, absolutely loving it. Keen. And when it comes to the questions and everything, like you just said, Claire, there is no stupid question. And as somebody who had no idea what miasma was, and actually <laughs> genuinely thought everyone else also had asthma at that event, <laughs> I like that one. Well, why would you know what miasma was? Yeah. <laughs> why, why would you it was a really high pollen count of that event yeah. i'm like yeah. oh gosh, everyone's suffering with asthma <laughs> this is interesting no they weren't and this happened in play and I had a lot of people laughing but do you know what oh it's fine <laughs> we're all good i mean no i mean you say a lot of people no i was laughing at you yeah <laughs> he was, was laughing, laughing at me <laughs> there's always there, there was always going to be someone on the field if you don't know what miasma is like there's there's going to be so that's the difference in this setting, I hope you agree, Claire, but like there's always going to be someone that's ec statically excited to explain to you what my asthma is. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, the entire game, right? And the entirety of LARP is about talking to each other yeah. and telling a story together. So people just want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Right. Uh, anything else you want to, anything else you want to plug? Um, Claire, no, you've got, you've got some, uh, podcasts that you've been releasing over at PD, right? Are you are you going to be doing any more of those? If we can find people to edit them, <laughs> <laughs> that's actually the honest answer. Yeah, we can yeah. all we we're all really good at talking, and uh, we're all terrible at editing them. Yeah, editing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. Editing <laughs> is. Uh, oh yeah, of course. Yeah, we we have we have a uh, we hire one in, right, Robin? We don't... Yeah. 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 <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's totally you... not just Oliver having a meltdown behind his PC once a week. <laughs> it's just this is the thing. I mean, I I enjoy talking, and I don't mind the sound of my own voice. But when when you're listening to it, it's just like over and over and over again for like twice the amount of time. Um, I've I've got it I've got it down to a a, a podcast is easier than like a short form video. Way easier. Mm. It actually, sometimes takes me less time to put together something like a uh like a a, a well edited short or tiktok than it does like an entire podcast because like you can just put things on double speed and uh just just do real quick keybinds and just cut things out so you, you i've got it down to about kind of the same time as the podcast yeah. runs yeah so you're, you're kind of like quick that and then i, I just get to do the yeah. fun bits i just get to do the, the overlays and the thumbnails <laughs> <laughs> i like my job better <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So Andy edit, does most of our editing. Yeah. Which, of course, we'd, we'd rather he was writing. Well, yeah, this is exactly. It's this is the thing. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just a right point. <laughs> what are you doing, Andy? I'm editing, but you've got winds to write. <laughs> write, the, <laughs> write the winds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sorry if you're going to have to listen to me being squeaky and Welsh at double speed. No, it's 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 okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 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 don't worry, don't worry. It's, it's all fine. Excellent. Right, uh, Claire, thank you very much for coming on. You've been very generous with the time. I'm super excited for Empire this year, 2024. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. Thank you very much. It is. On. It is. Thank you. Right. <laughs> say goodbye to the podcast, everyone. See you later, everyone. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much for stopping by. If you enjoyed that episode, then hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know whenever a new episode of LARP Tales is out. 
If you're listening to us on an audio platform, then please leave us a five-star review. We also have a Patreon. If you do wish to support us in that way, you of course are under absolutely no obligation to do so. Go check out some of our other content on To Have and To Roll. Until the next time though, we love you and stay safe.